Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about some things that I've been learning while using ChatGPT and how they stack up for language learning, focusing particularly on ChatGPT, the advanced voice mode. So starting with ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, like I said, I'm working on trying to prove that it is actually a good tool for language learning instead of, you know, just saying that it is. I want to be, you know, a good case study of it actually working. There's one thing in particular to me that's made it really frustrating to use, and that's that in the advanced mode, you can't make ChatGPT wait for you to finish speaking. When using advanced voice mode, you can't hold down on the screen to extend your input, similar to how you could when you're using the normal 4.0 voice mode. Now, why is that a problem? It's because when you're speaking a language, you're still learning. Like me with Japanese, there are naturally a lot of pauses when you're trying to reproduce language that you're not familiar with. And because of those pauses, ChatGPT tends to jump in and respond the second you stop. In ChatGPT 4.0's standard voice mode, you can press and hold the screen while you talk, and as long as you're holding, you can pause, think, whatever, without ChatGPT interrupting. But in the advanced voice mode, this feature is just gone. If you pause too long, ChatGPT jumps in and starts responding. And it's not great for those natural thinking moments during language practice. Hopefully this is something that can change in the future, but for now it looks like you kind of got to get used to it interrupting your train of thought, uh, which is not great for language learning when you're trying to recall information and it suddenly starts speaking and interrupts you. So that's a feature that's actually really bothered me and I really wish that they would bring back the, uh, the tap to continue user input. Now, moving on, I wanna talk a little bit about custom instructions. If you don't know what custom instructions are, it's a setting within ChatGPT that allows you to tell the entirety of the system how you would like it to respond to you or what its role should be and it keeps that instructions throughout all of your chats, or at least until you change them. Now, in voice mode, it's a little bit of a hit or a miss. I've had exchanges where they work really well, and other times where they don't kick in right away. I've noticed that when I set up custom instructions, they don't always take effect in the first new chat I create. But by the second chat, I usually get them working. One challenge I've had, though, is with language instruction. I've tried to make the instructions concise, asking it not to say things like good job or that's perfect, but it still does that even when I specifically tell it not to. The reason why I would want that to be a custom instruction, why I wouldn't want it to say good job or that's perfect or give me praise is because ChatGPT's advanced voice has a time limit for daily use. It's 45 minutes for plus users and then for free users, you actually do get access to it, but it's only 15 minutes a month for free. With this being the case, efficiency is key. Time spent on unnecessary praise is time lost from your daily limit. Of course, it could be that I haven't optimized the instructions enough, but that's one area where it hasn't followed through as expected and continues to praise me for doing a good job when that's not what I wanted to do. So going back, I really do like ChatGPT's uh, feature where you can interrupt it. Uh, where I'm not a big fan of having to interrupt it because it interrupted me and didn't let me finish my train of thought. It is nice that I can in instances where it starts saying something that was unintended or going in a direction that I didn't mean for it to go in. Being able to interrupt it and redirect it is really convenient. It is a little jarring though because in normal conversation when you're speaking with another human, they stop talking and that's how you know that they're listening to you, right? But with ChatGPT, it continues to talk even when you've interrupted it. And it's a little, like I said, it's a little jarring because it doesn't feel like it's listening to you, but it is listening to you. It just takes a moment for it to stop talking. And so you can continue to talk over it and redirect it or say whatever it is that you want to say and be confident that it heard everything that you were saying, even though it hadn't finished speaking yet. Now, if you need to interrupt ChatGPT, it's best to do it quickly. Um, if you let it finish most of its response or what it's saying, it may consider your interruption a response to what it is currently saying instead of 
a correction or a continuation of what you were trying to say before. So try to interrupt it quickly. Otherwise, it might consider it to be uh, input or new input f uh, from what it's currently saying. There's so many videos online of people talking about accents in ChatGPT and how they're a fun way to interact or make the experience more personal, like having it talk in your local dialect or tell interesting stories or just to have it do accents that you think are funny or interesting. Now, it is fun and it is interesting, but for language learners, this feature is so much more than that. It's actually a really powerful tool for improving your listening and comprehension skills. When you're learning a language, one of the biggest challenges is understanding people who speak in different accents or dialects. English, for example, doesn't sound the same everywhere in the world, and being able to call upon different varieties of English in your practice is really impressive, actually. It's, it's a really incredible tool. Whether you're trying to improve your international ear or prepare for real-world interactions, this feature helps you become more familiar with different accents and how they change the way English is spoken. The beauty of this is that it doesn't just train you for one type of English, it helps prepare you for a global understanding of the language, you know, give you a more international ear. So another thing that I love that you can do with ChatGPT and language learning is how it can handle multiple languages in the same conversation. I can speak English and throw in a few Japanese phrases and it responds perfectly in both languages or can understand the context to know which language it should respond in. It's great because if I want to switch the conversation entirely to Japanese, I can do that mid conversation. It's a really neat experience to be able to be multilingual with ChatGPT that I haven't seen any other AI voice models do quite as well. This is especially helpful when you're still developing your language skills. One of the reasons why I think this is so helpful for language learning is that while you're still developing your language skills, you can't always express yourself perfectly in your second language. Sometimes being able to draw from your first language or even another language you're familiar with can help you bridge the gap in your understanding. ChatGPT's ability to handle multiple languages in the same conversation really enhances the language learning experience. So for those that are learning English, if you don't know very much English, you could probably have the majority of your experience in your native tongue asking questions about English. And then as you're ready, start switching to more and more English and less in your native tongue. That's something that you can't really do with some of the other AI models. For example, let's take a look at Google's Gemini voice model. In English, it's solid, really solid. Actually, I think I might prefer how it talks in English more than ChatGPT, and I think it's even a little bit faster. However, when it comes to handling other languages, it's a mess. Let me give you an example. Can you tell me how to say, hi, my name is Elias, and I'm from the United States, and I am learning Japanese in Japanese? Okay, I can help with that. Here's a way to introduce yourself in Japanese. Konnichiwa. Let's break it down. Konnichiwa means hello. Okay. What? I'll pause it there. So you can hear that, that sounded... Was it correct? Yes, but it wasn't super great. This is what it sounds like in ChatGPT. Hey, how do I say, my name is Elias, and I'm from the United States, and I like learning Japanese in Japanese? There's a big difference there uh, in how the two respond. Several times I've tried speaking Japanese to Gemini and suddenly just switches to this really awkward katakana English Google Translate type of speech and uh, it's awful. If you know what that sounds like, it's not a... I, I, I wouldn't use that to try to do language learning. So Anthropic doesn't currently have a voice model, so I can't test it with that. Most people are doing like this API stuff where they're sending it to 11 labs and 11 labs creates a voice for it. But Anthropic its own does not have a voice model yet. There are some other apps, you know, they might even be doing that same thing, but I know Pi is one that I've experienced with before. And Pi also is okay in English, 
but when asking it to do things in another language sounds quite awful. Let me show you a little bit of what pie sounds like. Hey, I was wondering if you can help me figure out how to say, or if you can tell me how to say it in Japanese. Hello, my name is Elias. I'm from the United States and I like learning Japanese. You got it. Here's how you can say that in Japanese. Konnichiwa, watashi no namae wa Elias desu. Watashi wa America kara kimashita. Watashi wa Nihongo no benkyu ga suki desu. Konnichiwa, si no mengchien herayasu desu. Si hamaru kakara lai mashida. Si hari ben you no mien chian ga hao ki desu. I don't even know what it was doing at the end there. Um, just for fun, I wanted to see how it does with uh, Spanish. How can I say that in Spanish? No problem. Let's give Spanish a try. You can say that in Spanish like this. Me llamo Elias y soy de Estados Unidos. Me gusta mucho aprender japonés. Okay, so it's not completely awful, but it's also not great. It's a far cry from what ChatGPT is able to do. I do want to say that if you're using Gemini or ChatGPT in just the standard text mode, you don't really need to worry about which one is better. They're on the same page. It's really in the voice mode that ChatGPT is significantly better than Gemini. So if you're a free user, feel free to use whichever one you want. I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. Anyway, that's it for today. That's all I got kind of written down for me to go over with you guys. I hope that this gave you some insight into using AI voice tools for language learning and why, for me, in my opinion, ChatGPT still holds the, uh, the crown despite its quirks. If you've tried other AI tools or have any other questions, drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I guess I'm supposed to say that so you know this channel can grow. Otherwise, the next video you see is gonna be another video documenting my language learning process, uh, trying to get to fluency with Japanese. So I'll see you guys in the next one.